come on, whose idea was it to do all these bales? <laughs> all right, guys, so you know that Western Wilds, we have become the silage king where we've made tons and tons of silage bales, but it's time that we diversified a little bit. And I'm, I've got some plans, and I want to see if we can possibly do $10 million in sales from milk. See if our cattle, is it possible for our cattle to make us $10 million? I don't know if it's possible. We're in trouble right now. So in the past little bit, we have been prepping new crops, brand new crops. Planting is what we can. We've got three new fields built. We've been rolling those out. We've been expanding that grass field ready for cows. And of course, we also have to take care of, we've got to take care of herbicide now because we got weeds to deal with on these brand new crops. And all the whole time, we still need to worry about the cattle we've already picked up. We've got full pastures, guys. The pastures are packed with cattle. We even got calves over in the calving barn in the far side. And that brings us to our very first problem. How the heck are we going to feed, well, $10 million worth of profits in cattle? How the heck are we gonna feed all these guys? Uh, currently, I think we're around 600 head of cattle right now, and I've had to go buy some grass bales just in order to get this started. And that's what we have right now. That's all I've got. I've brought a truckload of grass bales, loaded them in the barn, and we've been using that to feed our cattle, kinda. I mean, it's it's better than nothing, yes. But man, this is just not a good system, and I don't want to continue going down this path. When you're making 1,500 to 2,000 silage bales a year, I'm pretty sure you can find a way to make some hay bales, right? I think we can find a way to make that work as well. So once again, this feels a little bit like starting from scratch all over again. I feel like we're right back to where we began in a way. Well, at least we have a lot of pretty equipment as you can see, and today is all about prepping this equipment. Unfortunately, guys, we're back in debt again. I've gone through, I've burned through $11.5 million building this amazing cattle ranch. It's gonna be the best cattle ranch on Western Wilds, let's be honest, but I've blown through $11.5 million building this thing up. It's ridiculous. I am once again asking for your financial support. That's right. We've had to go to the bank for more money from humble beginnings to, well, what we have now is pretty incredible still. I mean, look at look at this. we got the calf barn right here. Look at all the cows. we got 40 head of cows in here. we got a bunch of calves going on. I don't even know how many head of calves we have right now. And then just down in the end, we've got our main milking shed down here as well. And like I said, a couple hundred head of cattle can fit in here at a time. And this is where the magic is going to happen. We're going to make tons of money off all this milk. And then, of course, off in the distance, well, our open pasture for, well, all our cattle, we can move them up and back and forth. They're all over the place. And then, of course, what we've gotten done recently, we've got the brand new soybean field. And we also have a couple more fields a little bit further down that have been prepped and ready to be planted, which we're going to be getting to right away. So really, we can't afford to have any breakdown. So today is a maintenance day. We are cleaning everything up today from the Magnum repair day, clean day. Our 7R desperately needs a little bit of TLC as well. You know what's funny? This Massey 8S is becoming probably one of my favorite tractors. I'm, I'm, I'm really digging this thing. It's been a great addition, even though we bought it used. And of course, our newest addition, the Quad Track 620 with the roller back there. Not that, I mean, this is pretty minor, of course, right? But of course, we got to keep up on maintenance on that one as well. Of course, since we're cleaning things up, we might as well clean up the sea dock. This is our main planting unit, of course, which is going to get some use very quickly here. Fortunately, the combines didn't get any use, so we don't have to clean anything up. But there you go. Look at this farm is set. We got so much room back again. Tons of room to prep things, get ready when planting season, harvest season kicks into high gear here in just a couple of weeks, guys. You know what? Let's shut her down. And uh, we'll see you when, when there's some work to get done. Hey, you, do, you, do you guys smell that? Do you guys... That's something. What is that? Oh, that's right. It's canola plant in season. That's what it is. It's time to plant some canola. And you know what else? I think it's hay in season too. I think it's like a two for day. So everything should be good and set up. Like I said, we prepped everything. All our equipment should be ready to rock. We've got the seed hawk ready to go. Filled up. Seeded, fertilized, ready, ready to rock. And of course, the quad track. We got that repaired. All the maintenance is done. Really, all we got to go do is hook up and get on the field. This canola field really shouldn't take us too long to get planted. I really need to build a walkway down from the house down to the shop. Otherwise, I'm not. I, it's like a five, maybe a 30 second walk. And whatever. I'm driving the truck down. Dunk. Oh, please fall. Please fall. Please fall. <laughs> Nothing worse than trying to show off and uh, completely missing it. Am I? Am I right? Get these lights on. Oh, yeah. There she is. The quad track all ready to rock and roll. Get this door open up. We gotta squeeze this thing out a little bit. There's lots of room in this shop, though. We should be good. Let's go. 
out we go everything else is prepped guys like i said we just got to go out over to the seed hawk grab onto this thing and we're out in the field first thing in the morning it's really going to take us no time this is what the prep work is all about now if only i could find a way to make some more money really quick oh you know what i got plans for that too i suppose if we need to go that way right let's hook her up just get a hitch on connect our hoses perfect all of them are connected we're good to go let's get the field let's get out of here so like i said if i do need to make a quick buck guys just look ahead of us there there's a bunch of silage bales still sitting right out in front of us there could be sold right now but the prices are low i still could make some money off those i don't want to try i'm trying to avoid that i think i'll pay the interest rates rather than selling those off that's the plan for now let's get these fields in the ground and hopefully this stuff here can be a supplementing our, our economy basically finding other ways to make some cash out here on uh, on western wild because i don't want to sell all those bales off until the timing is just right which will probably be in a couple months still so we're gonna get a couple more cuts of hay or a couple more cuts of silage off of this build up our bale stock and sell them all off today we're getting the canola in the ground look at all this we're ready to go seed hawk looks good we got the beans behind us this is going to be canola and i believe we're doing oat on the far field so we get some straw at some point soon time to go let's drop this head down and uh let's get to planting canola going to the ground let's go there is something that's just extremely satisfying to me about planting on a freshly limed field you just kind of go in it just cuts through that lime tills the soil up a little bit gets those seeds in the ground and uh, yeah it looks great you can really tell where you've been we're gonna get down on the far side here and i'm gonna set up the gps so i don't need to, to worry about it too much these fields aren't aren't huge by any means but they're actually i'm i'm surprised at how big they feel in a way we're gonna have to wait and see as we get through more of these fields how much we get off this all right let's get around the corner and we'll set the gps on this one here get around right about there and gps is engaged let's go perfect that's makes my life easy hands off I can go serve some TikTok. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have wasted my time with that. That's 38 seconds of my life. I, I won't be getting back. All right, roughly 35 minutes and field is done, guys. That was quick. I mean, like I said, this is a good sized field. This seed hawk makes short work of, of bigger jobs like this. If we were still using that little Amazon planter we had before, man, we'd be out here for probably two hours, maybe three. This thing here, we just got through it. This is going to be more important as time goes on, of course, as we keep on biggering and uh, giganticizing our fields. I know this fig feels like a bit of overkill for what we're doing right now, and it definitely is. But as we progress, things are going to be, well, we're going to need it. But for now, let's move along. We got we got some silage to go make and maybe a little bit of hay too. Of course, I'm I'm not walking across the farm. The truck's here. We're taking it. So we're over in the cold storage and I've got one of our, our new silage making units. It's kind of experimental. I mean, it's still working with realism. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's not realistic, it's crazy. I mean, it is uh, a John Deere, it says, I guess. Uh, you know what, And we got more than one, right? What's better than one? How about four of them? We got four of these things instead. You know what, these have been great for this. It's been great for pumping out bales. It's our new silage bale system. Copyright Clutch Sim 2022. This thing is amazing. Um, well, it does, I don't know about amazing. It's a, it's a gr great way of doing this, though. So this is what's been allowing us to pump out the amount of bales we have in such a short period of time. To be honest, though, I haven't seen this one in the John Deere brochure. But today we're going to do something a little bit different with this unit. We're not going to be making silage bales off the hop here. We're going to start off by making some hay bales. So I need to do, well, just a normal cut, guys. I need to go through part of this field, cut it up, and get some hay bales off this. So I've dropped the balers off, and we're going to head in with just the mowers, and hopefully that'll work. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's, that's going to work out great. Now, I don't want to do too much of this field. I want to focus still on silage because that's really where the money is. But I also don't want to be buying hay bales. Hay bales, buying hay bales is is not for me. It's not going to happen. We're done with that. We're, we're making our own hay bales. And this is going to be one way we can do it. Now, I just need to figure out exactly how much hay I'm going to be needing. Got to try to, to salvage that. So we're going to do maybe a couple laps. I kind of got an idea how much we're going to use right here. I've got about half or maybe two thirds of this field. And from there, guys, we're going to do the rest in silage bales. Let's go grab the balers after this. There we go. We're back at silage bale wrapping. I think we've got enough, uh, enough windrows there for the hay. We still need to tend that, of course, and then re-windrow it and pick it up. But now we're on to silage bale, and this is our new silage bale setup, guys. This baler is amazing. It's still in prototype, but I mean, completely legal, and I mean, very, very realistic. Hashtag realism. 
ish. Wow. Realistic ish is the, the word I'm looking for there. Looking good, though, I think we're going to get through this field relatively quick. And by quick, I mean somewhat quick with lots and lots and lots of bales. Look how many freaking bales we're making. <laughs> this is crazy. The amount of bales, more bales we're getting from this combined field now is kind of hurting me a little bit. I think we might almost be doubling it up, guys. Look how many bales we got off of this field. I mean, I, I don't want to do a quick count. Well, it was probably, a, it's like 1,500. It's, there's a lot of bales here. There's, I, I don't know if anyone's doing a count. You can go, go ahead, start counting right now. It's going to take you a hot minute. And I thought what we were getting from last time, this is 700 bales. And I thought this was a lot. This is, this is almost small time now. The Silage King is back. The Silage King is back. Now on to our hay business, our hay side of the things. I've got the 8S, the Massey Ferguson that I've been really enjoying. Like I said earlier, guys, we're hooked up to our new tether. You know what? I might have to get more tethers and we can ted right behind our mower since those, those experimental units have that PTO. But for now, we got the 8S. We're heading into the field. Let's go. Oh, I feel like there's something dragging. I can't get above 19 miles an hour. Let's see here. Oh, I know what it is. Hang on a sec. Let me just pull off. Uh, I'll get by in front of this, this one here, this room. Let's just go and... Um, yeah, it usually helps if you connect your hoses, your hydraulic hoses. For some reason, they're connected to the brakes. I don't know exactly why on this unit, but it is. Just make sure they're connected, I guess. All right, back on out. Pass all these bales and... Look at, wait, wait, look at all these bales. Look at all the freaking bales. Holy shnikes. Um, guys, there's just so many. It's as far as I can see. It's as far, oh, there we go. There's the end. Finally found the end of them. At least from here, we can see kind of how many hay bales we're going to get. But uh, guys, that's, there's a lot of bales here. We're on the very far side, the very westerly side, just up against the tracks. And it's time to get to hay in. But it's, compared to the silage bales, this is this is nothing. I think this is probably going to be maybe a quarter of what we got from silage bales. But man, there's still going to be quite a few of these. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see once we windrow them all up. This is going to be a little bit faster to bale because I mean, I'm emerging two of these into one, of course, with a windrower. But still, it's an extra step, which kind of sucks. So we found a way to make our silage bale system as efficient as possible. I think our next step is going to be this haying system, guys. We need to find a way to pick up these hay bales a little bit more efficiently. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. I don't have the money yet. I definitely don't have the money yet. So... Wait for that. We'll be doing that next. All right. All done for that. Let's unpack all our equipment. Get rid of this uh, this tether. We got to go get the windrower hooked up to the Massey here. We're going to get back in the field. Start windrowing. Driving by all these silage bales back and forth here. It's making me a little nervous on how long I'd be out here picking them up in a bit. But whatever. For now, let's worry about the hay because we don't have any hay for our cattle. The silage bales can stay in the field for the time being. We've got some silage bales that are already packed, of course. They're already fermented. They are already silage, so I can use those for food right away. Not worried about the ones in the field. For now, let's just get to tedding or wind rowing, I should say, and get uh, get through this field. And while we're at it, we might as well get some help baling behind us. We got that new uh, our new Vicon baler as well. It can wrap. It can just make hay bales as well, which is great. It's super fast for making round bales. This is the way to do it for me. I think this is going to be good, but I think we might have to find ways to maximize this for our hay, though. We might better it. Yeah, bettering. That's the word I'm looking for. We're going to bettering it. All right, so hay bales are pretty much done. There's a couple more left to wrap up there. But after that, guys, I need to get in here and pick these up and bring them over to our shed. I want to make some TMR right away. Oh, boy. We'll get one last row here. Yep. Uh, super, super legal and, uh, and realistic. We're picking up our bales right now. Realistic. We're picking up our bales. Well, now this is a problem I didn't really consider is how was I going to get this road train over from this side of the farm over to that big bale farm, big bale shed we got on the far side. I don't think I could cut through. There's no way. So I'm going to have to go around everything. We'll get around our barn right there, our shop, and then all the way around the farm. We're going to go up and around the north side of the farm itself, I think. And then, ooh, we got the rickety bridge to go across. I mean, it can't be too much weight to cross this old wooden bridge. This is why I built new bridges on the other side, but this is the one we're using now. Oh, good. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? Should be lots of room in this shop for a lot of hay bales. Let's see what we can fit in there. All right, first one done. Just pulling this road train on out. We've got everything emptied off. That's 136 bales already in here. It doesn't even look like it's that many. Of course, now that we've got all our hay bales, I'm going to need some silage bales as well to make that, that sweet, sweet TMR for our cows. We'll load up a truckload uh, 
realistically ish over here and then take it back across now at least now i can just kind of scoot across through the cattle area i'm not doing the road train one trailer we can kind of scoot through our farm this way and not have to worry you know the road train's just not going to fit through this part but single single trailer yeah no problem and plus it's a lot faster just get across over by the pond and then we're going to drop these off inside the shed as well to keep them uh, safe and then lastly i need some straw bales and these bloody things just cost me almost 20 grand this is why i need to make my own straw ridiculous man inflation's getting out of hand but we still have a couple grass bales here we were using to feed before but like i said i was buying those as well we don't have to worry about that anymore we'll leave them there just in case like emergency use bales we'll store some up there for now let's take the uh, 7810 and get back across and start loading up some tmr here uh we've got the what is that a 4755 it's already over there with the machine the mixing machine should be good to go probably shouldn't have put my straw bales in the way of these but whatever we'll grab a couple of hay bales in here gotta figure out my mix in here as well but for now let's just start loading it up and we'll kind of wing it that's the best way for me okay now since straw is kind of limited for now i'm gonna try and focus on putting as little straw as possible in our tmr mix we're gonna focus on silage of course and the hay we tend to have quite a bit of both so i'm just gonna unwrap a couple of these bales we're gonna have a couple silage bales here we'll throw those in there we're gonna try to maximize using both silage and hay and maybe just put one straw bale in only one is kind of filler that's it oh i can see already this is going to be getting monotonous with the amount of bales i need to put in here and we're gonna have to do probably multiple of these almost every single day to get our, our animals fed this is going to be a lot of moving bales around there's got to be a better system this is this is going to work for now but i can't do this forever moving silage bales hay bales straw bales maybe we need to get some kind of a silo system with a blower that can move this stuff ferment the silage i don't know i gotta figure out something there we need to come up with another plan because while this does work this is just gonna be a painful way of setting the system all up we're gonna need to find better ways once we we need some money though i guess too huh i feel like we're caught between a rock and a hard place right now well at least we've got one fill for now like i said this is it just means we're gonna have to work a little bit harder for now it's not the biggest thing this 4755 in this trailer though look at she is she's looking a little rough right now that's a, she's squatting a little bit there that's for sure that's all good we'll pull her in it still does the job it just just a, it's a small tow back and forth we'll feed our cows we need to figure out something else though at some point for now this is going to be the solution for our the cattle king the silage the tmr king i don't know this is going to be our feeding solution here on western wilds the cattle ranch the massive cattle ranch this is going to have to work for now so keep on going back and forth we've got to feed the rest of our barn still we're empty we still need to feed the rest guys we only got we only have the open pasture we still got to feed both our our, our uh, calf barn as well as the main milking barn as well they need food in both of those so we've got a couple runs to make here and it's not gonna just stop it this is gonna be a daily oh, watch out for that bridge this is gonna be a daily thing that we're gonna be having to do i just foresee a lot of work in my future so that is what it is nothing you can do about that you got to keep on feeding so we'll be back doing more of this we got to optimize this thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed drop a like don't forget to subscribe and of course if you want to see where this massive cattle farm on western wilds all started off i'll make sure to drop the video there go check that video out good time anyways guys thanks again see you next time